It's time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Power Days. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Black and Coach Fisher. Coach, congratulations. You get a 27-24 win over Syracuse. A lot of heart and soul in this game for your team, and uh, and you hold on, you get the win by three points. Kids played hard. Kids played hard. Didn't always play well at times, but we made big plays on both sides of the ball. Uh, punted the ball very well. Had a critical mistake on the punt return game again. But also, but defense gave us some third downs, but they still made big plays when they had to. Did a great job of containing the offense. Offense wasn't consistent enough, had a couple long drives, but hit big plays, which we hadn't done. And that got points. You actually had more points that way. So, but we fought, scratched, clawed, and competed in the game very hard. Got out to a good start, too, so you could play this one from ahead mm -hmm. instead of behind, which uh, a little bit different dynamic than what you've had sometimes. Exactly this right. Year. We got a turnover right off the yeah. bat, which we hadn't had a lot of turnovers. Defense, you know, uh, uh, Durbin had a great interception. Mm -hmm. We converted and hit a big pass play. You know, it, was it was just a good, you know, offense, defense feeding off each other. Florida State gets the win 27-24 to over Syracuse. We'll come back and take a look at the highlights right after this on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, parents weekend, uh, a good crowd on hand, a lot of the players' parents uh, obviously in, and a beautiful day to play Syracuse. Oh, it was. Great day. I mean, a beautiful day, good warm weather, clear, not hot, but not cold, and uh, here they are, they're in the empty set, getting a pass right off the middle. I'm going to tell you, they spread you out all over the field. Kyle Myers making a play there. Some of those plays, we got to play a little bit tighter in our man. We, we give them a couple little too many throws, but boom, um, right there, we got to make that play. Down, rolling down right there. He's got to squeeze it. Kyle's got to squeeze it. Derwin can get in front of it. Did a good job. I'll tell you what, Derek Naughty played an outstanding game in the middle. He, he made, led us in tackles, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, played very physical in the middle. And they tried to run it in there in that three-man front. And great play right here. Big turnover right off the bat. Derwin makes a play. They try to get the back up the backfield, and they're just really excited. Great to see Derwin make that play. Here we are, first play, get a little rollout. James decides to tuck it, picks it up. Nice job, got seven or eight yards. Got a good start right off the bat. Here we are, get a nice little zone play. Cam, who ended up having a great day. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's three or four plays in that game. He got arm tackled, just, just got caught. Well, if we can break through them, we're really big. Now, these right here, he's got to learn not just stick your head down and make four yards. Don't try to cut it back, making a cut too far away from the guy. Just got to stick it and go. But here we go, get a nice pass play. Goes to a second option back in the middle. Great job by James. Finds Nooney right down the middle of the field on a post route. And uh, great, to, great to, again, that last three out of four games we scored in our first drive. So we're really improving coming out of the gates a lot better. Great job by James. Good throw. Here we go. Defense holding up. It, they, uh, Dungey got his uh, ankle hurt, I believe, and got the other quarterback, Mahoney, in there, who played against us last year. He's played a lot of ball. Does a good job. Here they are, a little speed, faking a speed sweep. Quarterback run back up inside. Boom. They, they kept running those sticks right. We got to play those tighter. I know they're in man, but we got to play those a little bit tighter. We can't give up those, I call them, they're, they're, you know, just those six or eight blind throws that you can just fine yards on here. Great job here. Great job of Derwin reading the in quarters. They, they run a little spin route. And he sees a double cut on red number two and got down there. And they got some little pooch punt, but then they go for it on fourth down a lot. So you know, it's a nice, nice little weapon by them. They got a good bounce right there. We got it backed up. Here we go. Get a little uh, toss sweep on a hurry right here. Close to breaking this thing on the edge. because got that guy down just a hair, but nice job. Nice block right there by the left side and uh, nice run by King. Get a little boot play. James pulls up inside. Finds a low out right there to Keith Gavin. Great to see Keith back in action, catching the ball again. Ah, got to, we got to side adjust this. We got to get that sided. They, they brought a blitz on a little underneath route, and uh, but they got us on third down. They did a good job. We did a poor job on third down on offense. We, we didn't handle what we needed to do. They, we were like one to 13, and that's we're doing a really nice job. So that was bad. Uh, here they get a nice little run. They get the edge right here. Get a nice, uh, get a little soft uh, spot inside and get to running. Our defense did a good job here holding these, in these areas right here, forcing some field goals and things. Nice batted ball right there on an RPO by Josh Sweat, who also I thought had a good game. Here they are, third down picking, trying to pick it up. We did a good job on the run. Brian Burns in there, I think. Uh, I believe that's, uh, that's Christmas and Naughty. And uh, that ball actually got deflected. That ball right there got Matthew Thomas got a hand on that ball right there. And uh, 
got deflected, so it was good on the block. Here we get a little flip play outside. Cam getting on the edge, good blocking by our wide house Nooney, and looks like Keith Gavin on that play. We're getting a little 15-yard gain, getting him on the edge. A nice job. Here a little screen route. You got to get the guard out quicker. Guard's got to come out quicker and uh, get that kick out. We get that. We have a seam in there for maybe a little eight, 10 yard gain. Come back here on third down. They make us check it down. They did a good job. They dropped eight guys off and, and made the play and uh, know where to go with it. James didn't turn it over. That was a good thing. James didn't have a turnover on the day. Nice punt here. We did a good job punting the football for the most part. Got it pinned down inside the five. Uh, here they, we got to get, can't give up that inside. We got to squeeze that down and not give that up, but they get a little way. Option route right there. Now, we did get to get a high throw. Mm. Boy, I'd like to got that tip route. Huh. Boy, I'd like to got it. You see Derwin's energy, boy. He was wanting to make that play. Good job. You know, DJ caught the ball real nice. Just had the one poor decision later on. Here we get a nice little zone run. He cut it back, got the backer in space, and made it miss. And then you see Cam, which you don't realize how fast he is. He, Cam's really can run. He's got great top end speed and uh, great job getting down the sideline, popping that. Just made that backer miss in space. We got everybody blocked perfectly. And that's what great backs do. You block seven or eight of them, they've got to make one miss and outrun other guys. And, and uh, you know, he did that. Here we had this play. We, we just come off the edge right there. We got to set that edge a little better. We set that edge inside, was, was really in good shape. Here they are. Uh, just on those little six, eight yard little dink routes in the holes. But you mix in zone and man, they're going to get some of those. You got to understand. They moved the football really well all year on people. Great job there by Jalen Wilkerson, who just keeps getting better and better. Here we get back. Nice rush by Sweat. R rallying to the screen. There's, I think it was Trey Marshall. You saw Fred reading it from inside out. There's Jalen. There's Derwin. I mean, a lot of guys reading that screen. Great job. Now I don't want to catch that thing above our head. We got to get back to square and catch that thing. Where we want to. Again, here's that same route. We got to hit the sideline. Just hit the sideline and give me four yards. Quit trying to cut it back. That's what those screens and little flares and things are. Here we had a little miscommunication on a route. And but smart, there's where James has grown. Instead of taking a sack, getting hit, fumbling the ball, he sees it quickly. If somebody didn't mess up, it didn't do right, throws it away. That's where he's growing. Here they have a little shot play down the field. Oh boy, I thought we was gonna get that. Derwin and, and Levante both had over and top and underneath coverage. They threw it into double coverage and boy, I wish we got that pick. Good job for the guys contesting that throw. Now this was, I mean, third down, we're in two man. We cannot give up the inside. We got to wall that off. It's a good call. We just got to get it pieced together. Right here, good job, good tackle right there. I think it's Matthew Thomas on the play. Again, they're motioning out to empty. And this, we had a miscommunication. Just on a fourth down play, had him fourth and two, could have got it stopped and they motioned out. And uh, actually we had a guy on the wrong side of the field that should have motioned over with it and uh, we didn't get it done. Here we pop a little play action. This is James a little bit. James is a naked, but he's got to sprint on out. He can't just pull up back there in the pocket. He, and then they got to rough him. But he's got to get on outside right there and would have avoided the hit. Now we get the, what a beautifully blocked stretch play here. Hat on the hat, down the seam. That's the safety takes a bad angle. And all of a sudden, we get the cutback. Our receiver's doing a good job down there, giving a little convoy. And then Cam, again, finishing the run. Finishing the run and putting in the end zone. If you look at the play right there by Derek Kelly, I mean, there was Minshew, there was uh, Josh Ball, it was, um, Izzo on that side, all those guys. Everly at center, I mean, everybody just blocked that play beautifully. Here they go, mm, getting it in the hole. Another six, eight yard throw. I think we're up 21-7 right here. They run a pick play right here, good job. Good job, but boy, I'm gonna tell you what, he, he got a couple balls off, but almost fumbles and things that uh, we could create. He got one lateral. Nice job right here, he needs to go ahead and fair catch that ball too. Good no call right there, because he didn't touch him. Here they pop, we pop a counter play. Good job to see Amir back in the game. Amir's going, I tell you, Amir's going to be a really good player. He keeps getting more time and more time on kickoff returns and things. This is, we cannot have the penetration. We got the play block for a first down right here. We just get blown up at tackle right there. We cannot allow that penetration. We get the block and we're, we pick up a six, eight yard gain and miss a third and two right there, which is critical because it's 21 to seven. You want to go get that score to put you up three scores. Then you can start. And that's right here, get out of rush lanes now. Good job of guys containing him, but we got to get him on the ground. Dungy is a heck of a player now. That's a tough son of a gun now. He ran for over 100. Now, right here, we got an unblocked guy. Hampshire's unblocked in the hole. He blitzed in. So we should, that should have been a no gain. It was a third and seven. We had him unblocked in the hole. We got to make that play. Just took our eyes off of it. I don't know why he, he did that. And then they get a little, I, again, I saw a little nudge right there to create some separation, but didn't get it called. And good throw and catch. Now it's 21 14. Now they're right back in. That's why I say, even though you're up 14, that's still two plays. Good run right here by Cam. We get to a third and five. And right here, we, have miscom we had a miscommunication on a uh, right. No, this is one. It's got to throw a little bit, but he dropped it. We got to catch it. Got to catch the ball right there. Had a, a lot of blitz in the freshman's face. Made a good side adjustment. We got to we got to get that ball caught. Here they are. Uh, we got to get that guy on the ground. He is on those guys. Finally get him on the ground on a punt. And uh, 
Yeah, the quarterback run. They start going to that quarterback run after a while. Now our guy's doing a good job there. There was Josh Sweat. In fact, Trey Marshall in there. Josh getting a push on the pocket right here, getting this guy out here. Got, got to go get him, got to go get him, got to go get him. We can't let him break contain. Great job here. Tell you what, you talk about a little competitor. That was uh, Stanford Samuels. He and Levante boy doing a great job of competing back there. And right here for the half, just fair catch the ball. We got it with a minute to go. Run out the clock. We got the ball coming out second half. We take an unnecessary chance. It's just not a smart decision right there. And uh, we got to do a better job of educating them. And again, we've had some issues with that punt return. Here they are in zero. But our defense, great job. Great job right there. Batted the ball up front. And uh, guys did a great job of holding. And here, here's the thing. They didn't kick the field goal. They went for it on fourth down. So sometimes going for it on fourth down don't always work. Josh Sweat and the guys scrambling here. Now this is a very, very not, what are we doing? I don't know. We just got to knock the ball out. We're in perfect position. Why Hampshire did that, I don't know. We talked to him about it. And he said, I thought the guy can intercept. What's that? But we got the ball on fourth down. Just, just throw it away. And uh, he got it. He understood it. So hopefully he won't do it again. Well, and he, uh, not just him, but uh, you had Fagan in there. I mean, you were a little thin at the safety position. Oh, we were. So you, you, you were Fagan, a lot of guys him, up. Stanford Samuels in the secondary up front with Kane Doe on, you know, on offense. You had Cam and James Blackman and all the other guys. You had DJ Matthews playing out there. So, I mean, you got a lot of youth and, and a lot of young players. FSU with the lead at uh, intermission and getting the ball to start the second half. We'll look at those highlights when we come back here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, you get the ball to start the second half with the lead, looking to pat it or add to it here. Yeah, it was. And wish we got a drive. We've been doing that. We did right here. We get a nice five yard gain right here. We end up missing a third and one half. We get a nice five, six yard gain right off the bat. Come back and get a run up in here. Miss one block. We get to a third and three and uh, miss this convert right here. 29. 29 has got to take that route all the way down inside. And if he does, eight's going to be wide open. He just, he just didn't take the route far enough. That's just a young guy's mistake. And, a rookie mistake that, you know, he got in a hurry on his route. You know what I'm saying? And that happened. When you play young players, sometimes they don't do it on purpose. And then they know how to do it. They just got to get on the field and do it. This right here is disappointing. We had to run. And then we, right here, we can't 
There ain't no Cyrus. I know he's a young guy. We got to tackle the guy. We ain't up there knocking people out. We got to wrap up, tackle, step on the toes, do the things we got to do. Uh, nice job right here, Levante Taylor Capito. because this man's a big physical guy. Now, of all the guys who cries on getting a hole, I love that guy. He is a phenomenal competitor, but he, the way they push off, it's a, it makes it a battle every time. That kid fights for that football. Here, a little screen right underneath. Uh, good job right here. Kyle Miles picked together for about six yard gain, instead of a, a big one. Uh, here they fake it, get the quarterback right back up inside. And we start doing a good job here. Good job by Kane Doe coming off the edge, getting a tackle. Uh, they get the field goal and get it back to uh, a uh, little four point game and 21 uh, 17. When we come back, we start moving the football really well. Nice stuff. Get it up just a hair, but nice catch by Nooney. Nice to catch by Nooney out there. Hit a little seal play right here. Get it right back up inside on third down. Got it. Now, if we get that block, maybe four, three could get going, but he gets going so fast. Nice pick up here. Come right back. Another little uh, short route right here to 89, Keith Gavin. And uh, what we got to start doing with these guys, taking those routes and events and start making those guys miss. Good job here. Now here, James really should have worked the left side. I and mean, he should have kept coming right here. got a few more yards. He could have worked the left side right here. And we got a block. Nooney misses the block. Should have blocked down. He blocked out. You got to get the kick out right there when he had the first down. But fourth down, we end up going for it. Great job. Reads down to his second route. Izzo runs a great option route underneath. And, uh, you know, great pickup by James to come down to it and pick up a fourth down. Now, unfortunately, right here, we lose yard. Right here, we miss two blocks on the perimeter. Miss two blocks on the perimeter right here and, and give up. You know, should have been a nice play. And right here, they got the screen on third down. They put a spy guy in there. They played it. They backed him out. And they got it. And, and uh, But Ricky comes in. This is huge. Gets it back to a, a touchdown game. And like I said, we feel very good. About 50, 52 yards with Ricky. He'd be in practice every day. He's been very consistent. So. Felt very good about that field goal where the win was and everything. All right job right here, getting guys on the ground. Good job by Hans. Those young guys just getting better and better. Here they are, play action, dump. Now again, tough catch. They could have caught that, but also that's in traffic. It makes it a tough catch. Third down and three. Good job of reacting up with the three-man rush and the back was triggering, making the ball come out like a, another down guy. And we, and we held him off with coverage. And uh, But right, that ball's got to get caught. Got to catch that ball in the air. Got to catch that ball in the air. DJ does, and, man, and when he got the hop, was good, but we got to get that ball in the air. Here we get a nice play action. You see it, got the screen coming off of it. We hit earlier, nice job by Cam, good job by Everly out there blocking. Minshew made a nice block on that play, him and Derek Kelly. Here we go, get another little flip play. Got to press that block outside. I thought Cam could have got the edge right there. Got to stay outside, got to stay outside, but still a nice win. Here we come back now. This is blatant interference, point blank. I, I, and I looked at it on film again, and. Now, I give them the debate on the field, but after watching it, it's obvious interference. That's a big call because that would have given us first down inside the field goal range. And then on third down, we got to make this throw. Yes, he just missed it. We had a nice route to Keith and ended up missing it, but we'd had a field goal down there instead of a punt after the penalty. So, uh, you know, they, they got us one there, but like I say, they didn't do it on purpose. Here are those hitch routes out there in that little space when you get so spread out because you leave the box and they got the quarterback draw. So you got to be careful with Dungey. He puts you in a bind. You got to pick and choose when you, when you do those moments. And, Good job by job. We can't get out of our rush lanes. That's the thing about him, man. He keeps so many plays alive. Now picks a snap up, throws a great play right here by Hampshire. Great play by Hampshire. That long length reaching over top matters at DB. Here the quarterback run. Nice job getting them down. And fourth down, we get a huge stop here. We get that huge stop. They, they got to sneak and we got it down. They got them stopped by an inch. Then the first play after this, I don't know if this is what we're going to show right here, but uh, we had right here. Watch the tight end delay. Right here, 81. Ball should went to 81 right here. They had nobody on him. We ran him off. That's what we wanted. We wanted to dump down. James just missed a read right here. And if he would have, we'd had a big play and had some more points. Right here, we had pressure. We had Nooney coming open. And uh, he was going to the right guy. Just got pressure up front. And, you know, if we'd had the first down play, we wouldn't have been in that situation. Their little punt returner, boy, he's a gutsy little guy. He gets those hops and did a smart job with the ball. And our guys covered well there again. Got him back inside the 10. They got us on a hold right here, so it was interference. I couldn't see. I can't see on the film. And they said TV copy might have grabbed just a piece of cloth, but uh, you know we can't do that. That was getting off the field on third down, had them backed up inside the 10, especially in a one-score game like this. But good job, Derek Nani, who played extremely hard. He and Matthew had good games there. Uh, nice tackle by Josh Sweat out again. Had an outstanding day. Who, I can't see who else got in on that. Then we get the punt out here to DJ. DJ does a good job going up and catching that ball. Here we get a nice one. Great block play over here. Uh, Ricky Leonard and the boys and, and Josh Ball and everybody on that side and receivers and tight ends and got it popped in here. Now we come back, get a little play action. James does a good job of dumping the down inside. And like I said, I told five right there, just hit that thing, keep running. And he, we got to take care of that football. But if we got down the ground, got to get back in field goal range, we're moving for a touchdown right here. We get a nice first down run. Then on second down, we missed a block and then it's third and long. 
and uh, we didn't want to get moved out of field goal range. So we tried to pop a run and, and, and their blitz look, and then got it back in Ricky's range. Ricky's been kicking that thing. We wanted to get it to a two-score game. And he gets it right inside that right upright, makes a big kick, and gets it to 10 points. With about seven minutes to go in the game. Here they are. Great play by Derwin. Again, his, you know, just you saw him. He's just getting more active and active as he's playing. This is big, third and 10. They got a man wearing man under. He's got to be in the low hip, make that ball get air on it, not give him, not try to jump at him. That was just a big mistake right there in coverage that we can't have. Third and 10, we're off the field with a 10 point lead with five minutes. Now we can run some clock and get it away. Poor tackling right here. We just didn't tackle well in space. Stanford and guys missed a couple tackles. You get guys down before the sticks, it runs that clock. And now they got the sticks. Burnsy making a play out there in the flat. And he's continually moving the football. Uh, Josh Sweat, I mean inches from making just another sack. Just, but we got pressure on him. And I tell you, they kept hitting him and guy kept getting up. The Derwin, oh man, he liked to have that. The guy was cutting him to make a block, but at the same time he was catching that ball. Boy, I liked seeing him make it, but it, he was there to make the play. But it always seems like when you don't get that interception, the next play, the offense always makes a play. I mean, they always do. And uh, Ismail, again, they got a play out there in the flat. And we had our opportunities. And again, they just keep nickel and diamond. Again, we're getting the guy down, get him to a third down right here. And uh, this is the one. I think, is this the one we scramble on? We had the guy back. It's third and two. Now we get a third and 10. Matthew should eat this play up. He takes a bad angle. Fast as he is and athletic as he is, we get it. We had been a 10, been made it fourth and 10, and he just missed him. He just flat missed him. And we got to get that guy on the ground in space. And here they just run a little boot naked on the goal line. We sold out on the run, and they walk it in. Now it's a three point game with three minutes to go, and everything's on. Onside kick. Great job right here by Derwin. Guys up inside got it, and. Uh, Great job of him going up and getting that football, not waiting on it. Now we got it right here. First down, run a little boot naked, got it. James makes a good decision. But we got to get that block in here, James. Stay in bounds. You cannot go out of bounds right there. But right here, this is the one I can't see. I couldn't see on the film. And, and they moved it back. They never moved the spot. But they end up being just a hair short, and we end up inches, and we don't get the snap up. Snap doesn't come up. They pinch the inside. And uh, we're lucky we get it back, and, and we're able to punt it. And uh, we do get the pump because we've got to back to a yard and a half, and they were going to put 10 guys up there, 11 guys, and it just, you know, you couldn't give up the game right there. And I still had faith in our defense, and they played well all day. And it, but this is an unexcusable thing. We had a guy get out of a rush lane, they get a 20 yard scramble on the first play. Then we get the rush, getting to play them here pretty good. Uh, got to get some pressure. We, play, we peeled off on a blitzer. There's Derek Noddy making the play. But again, coverage sacks. He and Derek Jacob Pugh getting in there on the play. That's a big third and 14. Now, here's the one I want to see, too. Looks like he just grabs our guy and throws him out of the way, but they didn't call it. And they got 15 yards on a 14 yard down and getting up third and 14 again. Nice shot. They, now they're in field goal range. They hit a vertical, vertical out, like, uh, and they're back in range trying to ball. Now, this, again, if we get one of these sacks, this thing could be over, or that pick. I mean, they were trying to win it, but at the same time, man, we get a sack right here. Now, see, I'm, I'm not sure. Derwin says he got his fingers on this. And from our video, we think he did. And, just, and the guy was off just a hair, and, and Derwin got through. And again, they had a heck of a football team. Again, they they played like we are. They're four and five. Every game's been a one possession game. They had LSU at 28-26 at LSU, and LSU scored late to, to win it and got, and got it away. Uh, they beat Clemson. Beat Clemson. Beat, you know, played us tough. Had. Uh, Couple other games. I mean, it's all been played one. Miami. Played tough. Miami. I mean, it was twenty to nineteen with three minutes to go against Miami. This Syracuse team is a, is a very good football team. I mean, you're talking about Miami and Clemson, who'll be top probably top six teams in the country. And they're they beat one and have the other in twenty nineteen with three minutes to go, and have Cle uh, LSU, who just played Alabama, very tough on us. So this Syracuse team and what Dino's doing with that team is, is a very good football team. Got some a uh, couple key plays in the second half. Two big kicks by Aguayo, and then a big sack by Derek Nadi, who really has been playing well for him. Derek's playing outstanding. I mean, inside, less and tackles, pressure, and just a relentless guy who plays every play. Get the win 27-24. to 24. Turn the page. Next up, the defending national champs. We'll talk about that matchup with Clemson when we come back on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Today's final stats are brought to you by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Inside the Helmet is brought to you by Hyundai. Hey everyone and welcome to Inside the Helmet. I'm Katherine Phillips joined by red shirt senior linebacker Matthew Thomas. Matthew, first thing, did you play other sports growing up? 
Uh, yeah, I did play other stuff. I played um, a little bit of baseball and basketball. So what was it about football that made you stick with that sport? I mean, growing up, I just liked playing football. I just liked football the most and just wanted to play football, so just stuck to it. So throughout your football career, who's been the biggest role model for you? Biggest role model, um, I would say, is I have a mentor. Um, he's been my, my role model back at home. I look up to him, so he's been a good role model named Tony. How has he impacted your football career? Um, by, by he been like keeping me out of trouble, you know, just you know, being that father figure in my, in my, in my life because I didn't, I didn't have a father growing up, so that what he was and he just been that guy. So what is your favorite form of social media and why? Favorite so form of social media is Snapchat, nice and quick, you know, and stay up there for a nice little minute so I mean you could always go back to it and you can save it too. So. Save nice memories from a while back. I like Snapchat. So a typical Snapchat story for you, what does it look like? Listen to music, probably got some food on there, a couple of jokes, probably joking around with the players or something like that, but it's not too late. So if you're joking around with the guys, who are the guys that you're usually with? Uh, guys I'm usually with, uh, Devontae, Ironman, um, Derwin, just name a few. Do you have any hidden talents? Um, I mean, I like climbing trees. Climbing trees when I was younger, so I did climb trees pretty good. Okay, I need you to explain that. <laughs> Is that something you just discovered as a kid? Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I like I like mangoes <laughs> and Spanish lime. We had like mango trees back at home, so I mean, just need to climb them. And over time, I just got good. So you, you never stop, you still climb trees? I mean, I haven't climbed a tree probably like in a year or two. I wanted some fresh mangoes last time I went home, but I still got some of my climbing uh, tree skills. Okay. okay, a tree climber, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so you're from Miami. Were you always an FSU fan, or was there some rivalry there? No, I mean, growing up, uh, I definitely liked the Miami, but um, you know, it was, it was always back and forth, and then when I got older, you know, uh, just broaden my horizon, you know, just start thinking outside the box. So what was it about FSU when you came here? What about Florida State made you choose this school? I liked their defense, you know, um, their defense was, was nice and tough, and you know, they had a lot of ballers on their on, on team, you know, other players, that, that was good, so you know, that, that was really good, and just high school, I just like playing good defense, and Florida State always been known for playing good defense. So in your five years at Florida State, what's been your favorite memory? Favorite memory at Florida State? I mean, I'm hoping for my favorite moment to be when I graduate. Just practicing, hanging out with the guys, you know, the whole you know, season, you know, um, just the season that I did play. So, I mean, I just look back on, on the seasons and the fun that I did have with the players and just, you know, Having that bond, you know, the whole season, I just like having fun with you guys. That's awesome. All right, well, thank you for joining us for Inside the Helmet. We'll see you next time. Florida State, excellence isn't a goal, it's an expectation. In a world that's constantly evolving, the Seminoles are always working to give themselves a competitive edge in the college football landscape. That's why after Jimbo Fisher and the Knowles won the school's third national title, Florida State was determined to upgrade its existing locker room. The Manny Garcia locker room debuted before the 2014 season, a unique blend of physics and a sleek modern look. Well, we take a lot of pride in what we've been given here. This is the fourth season we've had it. Uh, we redid it after the national championship year, and it took a lot of work, a lot of planning with the company. Mark Robinson, director of football ops, did an outstanding job working with a company that specializes in making locker rooms. Designed with a similar model used by the Dallas Cowboys and New York Yankees, the state-of-the-art locker room allows for easy maneuvering and includes groundbreaking features like iPads and mobile charging devices built into each player's locker. 
it just opens the lines of communication up more. You're able to communicate with the players. They can see there's another reminder on your iPad. The daily schedule goes on there. We can put their highlight films on there. We can do all sorts of uh, neat tricks on there. Honoring the rich tradition of the football program, Seminole legends such as Deion Sanders, Warwick Dunn, and Chris Winkie are enshrined in the locker room with statues. Their jerseys, remaining lit at all times, is a symbol of past and present uniting. Running an efficient locker room can be hectic. Fortunately for Kearns and his staff, he has the assistance of some unsung heroes, student managers. The managers make this thing run. They'll unload the truck when we get home at three in the morning, do the game laundry. We lean on them. We're just very lucky to have such quality individuals. They're just outstanding kids. I'm very proud of them. I enjoy it. I love it. You're here working for Florida State football. You're doing something that everybody else would die to do. A job that often flies under the radar, these managers spend countless hours making sure the team has everything it needs to succeed during the week. Although this team behind the team is not looking for the spotlight, the coaching staff recognizes each manager as a valuable member of the Seminole family. Personally, I've worked with Coach Rick Trickett for the last three years. He knows me by name. His players know me by name. Coach Fisher knows me by name. A lot of these guys know me who I am. You know, things like that make you feel special, make you feel like you're wanted around here. The staff typically consists of 15 student managers working around the clock. Naturally, all the time spent together working toward a common goal has formed a bond that will last a lifetime. I've met some of my best friends that I have with football. These are guys that I will now connect with for the rest of my life. These guys will be the guys that come to weddings and come you hang out with for the rest of your life. You're like a brotherhood. Every family needs quality time together. And as the Knowles put it all on the line during competition, a place was needed for the team to call its own. Completed in 2016, the Players' Lounge is another welcomed addition to the Seminole lifestyle. A place where players can hang out before or after a long day of classes and practice. My favorite part definitely has to be ping pong. Um, yeah, I always come here for practice, you know, get a couple games if anybody who wants to come. You know, I obviously am the best player behind Brock Rubel, so, yeah. Really just resting. They like to come here, sit on the couch, watch TV, probably play pool or something, and just hang out and talk. Plush couches and TVs decorate the lounge and a mini movie theater gives the players an option to watch the latest flick or study game film. A full arcade ties the area together, making it a prime spot for the team to relax amid a grueling schedule. We always want to keep pushing the envelope with the facilities. Obviously, it's an important factor in recruiting. We ask them to be the best. We want to provide the best. You can't ask them to give them their best if we're not giving, giving the team their best. I think it's really important because, you know, being at the stadium, is very essential and I feel like coaches nowadays put state-of-the-art facilities in here like the players lounge you know we got the film rooms right here so if like players are sleeping and stuff they see the film room you know go in there and watch a little bit of film they stay here and you know get, they get their minds right rather than being at home or, and, you know doing something else so I feel like these state-of-the-art facilities are really helping me out as a player. Family is the cornerstone of the Florida State football program. Where Southern hospitality meets a competitive drive like no other the Seminoles have made it a priority to provide the best facilities for their players off the field, paving a path for achieving the mission on it. I'm Aria Masudi for the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnollsContest.com. Welcome back, Coach. This week you get the trip to uh, Clemson, obviously Memorial Stadium, very tough place to play, and very good opponent in Clemson, the defending oh, national champs. Played out, had an outstanding game with NC State, about like we did, went down the last possession, and NC State was driving to win this one. Got it, matter of fact, made a play to the three when it had the ball, would have had it, but had a penalty and got back, and Clemson you know, had a big interception, and the quarterback ran the ball very well. They're running it well. The back, young backs are coming on. you got receivers. Defensively, they're outstanding. Their front is outstanding. Linebackers are good. Secondary, I mean, they're an outstanding program, and right now, uh, no, we're sitting at the top of the ACC with Miami. Kickoff has been announced and is set for 3.30 on Saturday from Clemson, South Carolina. We'll come back and wrap up this week's Jimbo Fisher Show right after this.
Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Catherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson. He's the executive culinary director of Seminole Dining here on the campus of Florida State. And he's going to walk us through a game day recipe using natural gas. We have something for all the sweet tooth today. Yes, today we are making a real traditional bread pudding. Okay. And so uh, we're making a bread pudding with a caramel, white chocolate, praline, rum sauce. You can add a lot of words to it, but okay. it's going to be good at the end. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we'll start out with the sauce today. And as you see, we have butter and brown sugar, a little bit more butter. So I have my uh, cast iron kettle going here. I'm going to go ahead and add the butter and the brown sugar. And we're going to let this start to cook down and caramelize. You see the butter start to mix and the brown sugar start to caramelize. Right now I have equal parts brown sugar to butter. Okay. We're going to fold in some white chocolate, a little bit of heavy cream, and my favorite. Uh, today we're using a, a praline liqueur, okay. but any of your favorite rum or whiskey that you have uh, in the cabinet at home makes for a, a great pairing with this dish. Gotcha. So as the sauce is starting to cook, let's go ahead and start on the bread pudding recipe. All right. Okay, so for the bread pudding, I personally like to use croissants. And the best way is to use day-old croissants. Okay. Um, French bread is, is also commonly used, but uh, croissants is my favorite. Okay, so if you didn't have croissants, what else could you do? You know what's really good is a glazed donut. Really? Yes, uh, it, it's gonna go into kind of a sugar overload, but it does add a lot of flavor. Uh, you could grab those day-old glazed donuts that are you know marked down to 99 cents and uh, make a great bread pudding out of it. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna take our croissants and um, we'll go ahead and just tear them up. You can tear them, you can cut them, uh, whatever you'd like. We'll start out, we've got about 10 croissants in here. Now our custard is a three to one ratio. So it is uh, one cup of whole milk to a third cup eggs. And this is just a, like a large egg that's been um, cracked and beaten. And then to add uh, a little more flavor to it, We'll add in some white sugar, a little bit of vanilla, and some cinnamon. So we'll mix that custard up really well. And then this is going to be added on. And if you'd like, um, we'll go ahead and mix this in really well. While this is going, I'm going to take a look at the sauce. So over here, we're using natural gas. What is your favorite part of using that? I love using natural gas, especially for doing a dish like this, because you really want to caramelize that sugar. It's going to bring out a lot of the flavor in that final dish, and you can get the heat that you need uh, instantly off of the gas. And so as you can tell, it's, uh, it's already starting to caramelize and get to where we want it to be. All right, let's go ahead and mix uh, our bread mixture up. We'll take a, a few of the white chocolate pieces and add them in there. And we're going to add just a little bit more sugar. And we're going to take our pan, uh, we're going to cook it in a small cast iron pot today, and take just a little bit of raw butter and go around the outside of the pan so it doesn't stick. And as you can tell, some of the common ingredients today are butter a and whole cream, lot of butter. so we know this is going to taste really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take that uh, bread mixture and layer it into the pan. Now once your custard is completely mixed uh, with your croissants, you're going to want to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to fully soak up before you put it in the oven. Okay. And then right before it goes in the oven, we'll go ahead and take the sugar again, and we're just going to lightly dust it one more time on top, and it's ready for the oven. Set the oven uh, 350 degrees. It's going to cook for about 20, 25 minutes, but take a look at it. You want it to be nice and golden brown on top, and then um, it's ready to serve. All right, let's go back to the sauce while that's cooking. So, so far we have our butter and our brown sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and add our liqueur. The alcohol is going to cook out, but the flavor of the liqueur is gonna remain in, in the sauce. So it's, uh, it's still a good recipe for all ages. Now, as we're adding the cream, we have a, a very hot uh, caramel sauce working right now. So we wanna whisk very quickly as we add this. I'm gonna add the cream slowly and whisk. You can see the sauce starting to smooth out. Oh, wow. And now I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Down to low. And to carry some of those flavors through, let's go ahead and add a, a few white chocolate. Now the key to the sauce is go ahead and let this sit for a while. And uh, while it continues to build flavor and cook, 
I like to take uh, and add a little bit of some good citrus flavor to it. Okay. So I'll take an orange or a Florida orange and uh, cut it in half. And I'll go ahead and drop this in and just let it steep in my sauce for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. All right, well, let's take a look at that bread pudding. So that's that about a amazing. 20 or 25 minute bake time. Okay. And then we'll come back in. And when our sauce is ready, you can tell, see how nice and smooth that is? Yep. Drizzle it right over top of this bread pudding. And that's ready to go. That looks amazing. Free of calories, of course. Free of calories, no butter. For full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas into your home at your business or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Welcome back, Coach. We just talked about Clemson, but, uh, you know, focusing on Clemson is one thing. Focusing on your team and continuing to improve and, and keep sawing wood is what you got to do as you get to this point. We do. Season. We got young guys and you understand what they can do and what they can't do and try to give them things that give them a chance to be successful the next week. And, and that's what we got to go with. And hopefully they'll build and get, gain confidence. That's a big thing of all this. When you have success, confidence comes. And sometimes it's false confidence, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes when you lose, you shouldn't lose confidence. Sometimes you win, maybe you shouldn't gain. But somewhere that's just human nature. And you got to build on this, be confident in what you do and how you do it, and get better. Or stay with a chance to get better and build on a win over Syracuse. Again, that matchup with Clemson comes up Saturday at 3.30. We'll see you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.